Ever since we first started AnxietyCenter.com, we have emphasized the importance of stress reduction. That's because stress is the cause of anxiety symptoms. If we want to eliminate anxiety symptoms, we need to reduce the cause, which is stress. Thankfully, many people have understood this and worked hard at reducing their stress and have seen good results by doing so. Yet, many people haven't followed this important concept and how it contributes to a struggle with anxiety. So, we wanted to create a video to help convey this importance and why reducing stress can make such a big difference in recovery time and lasting success. To that end, here is our video about why reducing stress is so important, especially for overcoming anxiety disorder, hyperstimulation, and their symptoms. Behaving anxiously, which creates anxiety, activates the stress response. The stress response secretes stress hormones, which are stimulants, into the bloodstream where they travel throughout the body, causing numerous body-wide changes that prepare the body for immediate action. Since these body-wide changes are extensive, stress responses stress the body. A body that becomes stressed can exhibit symptoms of stress. Therefore, anxiety symptoms are symptoms of stress. They are called anxiety symptoms because anxious behavior is the main source of the stress that causes the body to become stressed and symptomatic. If you want to get rid of anxiety symptoms, we need to reduce the body stress and give the body sufficient time to recover. As the body recovers from stress, it stops producing symptoms of stress. Level 1 recovery needn't be more complicated than that, other than learning we don't have to fear and worry about anxiety symptoms. Since anxiety symptoms are merely symptoms of stress that will subside when we eliminate the body's unhealthy stress, there isn't any reason to worry about them. They will disappear when we eliminate that stress. And since all of us can reduce stress, there isn't any reason to worry that we can't eliminate anxiety symptoms. When we know what anxiety symptoms are and how to get rid of them, there isn't any good reason to become afraid of them. Unfortunately, many anxious people worry about their anxiety symptoms, which only adds stress, making their symptoms linger or become worse. Having symptoms and then worrying about them is a vicious cycle so many anxious people fall into. I know I did when I first started dealing with anxiety disorder. I understand how easy it is, especially when you have health and medical sensitivities. However, we can change that by understanding the role that stress plays. So, if you've ever wondered why stress makes such a difference, here's why. Regarding stress, the body has essentially two main systems. The sympathetic nervous system, which is the system responsible for excitation and stimulation and the parasympathetic nervous system, the system responsible for calming the body. We can label them as the calm and stress systems. When the body is healthy and not overly stressed, these two systems balance each other, keeping the body in a healthy balance between excitation, stimulation, and calm. To maintain this healthy balance, one system works in opposition to the other. When one is active, the other is suppressed. For instance, when we're stressed, the body becomes stimulated, subduing the calm system. After the stressor has passed, the calm system is able to re-engage, reducing the effects of being stressed. Again, these two systems work to balance each other when conditions are normal. As long as we behave in a way that maintains this balance, the body will keep itself in a healthy balance despite the ever-changing conditions, with one system counterbalancing the other. For instance, here are some of the ways these two systems work in opposition to each other. Regarding the calm system, GABA, the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter responsible for calming the nervous system, increases, whereas glutamate, the primary excitatory neurotransmitter responsible for stimulating the nervous system, decreases. With the stress system, glutamate increases and GABA decreases. The calm system calms neural activity. The stress system excites neural activity. The calm system calms metabolism, whereas the stress system increases metabolism. The calm system relaxes muscles. The stress system tightens muscles. The calm system improves vagus nerve tone. The stress system decreases vagus nerve tone. The calm system balances brain function and activity. The stress system increases activity in the fear center of the brain, which includes the amygdala and others. 
and reduces activity in the rationalization areas of the brain, which includes the cortex and others. The calm system slows respiration, whereas the stress system increases respiration. The calm system maintains healthy digestion, and the stress system, digestion is suppressed, and elimination is increased. With the calm system, we have normal senses and sensory perception. With the stress system, senses go on high alert and become super sensitive. With the calm system, we have healthy homeostatic regulation. The stress system, homeostasis becomes dysregulated, causing it to act erratically. With the calm system, we have healthy interaction between hormones. The stress system causes unhealthy interaction between hormones. The calm system reduces stimulation, whereas the stress system increases stimulation. With the calm system, the body can calm itself easily. But with the stress system, the body has less ability to calm itself. With the calm system, we're able to rest and sleep when we want. But the stress system makes it difficult resting and sleeping. Now, the calm system makes it easy for us to think clearly and rationally. But the stress system makes it difficult to think clearly and rationally, and our sense of danger and reactivity are heightened. With the calm system, we're able to contain fear, but the stress system makes us less able to contain fear. With the calm system, we're not on hyper-surveillance for danger, but the stress system makes us hypervigilant and reactive to danger. The calm system gives us easy access to the pleasure centers of the brain, but the stress system makes it difficult accessing the pleasure centers of the brain. The calm system gives us easy access to healthy, positive emotions, but the stress system reduces our ability to access healthy, positive emotions, but also puts an emphasis on negative emotions. The calm system builds gray matter in the brain, and gray matter is important for a healthy nervous system and cognition, whereas the stress system reduces gray matter in parts of the brain. The calm system takes a lot to trigger the stress response, whereas the stress system, stress responses become like a hair trigger, trigger very easily. With the calm system, we're able to easily calm and soothe ourselves, but the stress system makes it less able to calm and soothe ourselves. With the calm system, we can easily feel peace and contentment, but the stress system reduces our ability to feel peace and contentment. The calm system, we're less likely to have unwanted and intrusive thoughts, and if we do, we can dismiss them easily. But with the stress system, we're more likely to have unwanted and intrusive thoughts, which can also seem more threatening and relevant, as well as we have less ability to dismiss them. The calm system reduces our sense of urgency, or as the stress system increases a sense of urgency. The calm system can make it easy to feel settled and content, whereas with the stress system, we often feel unsettled and discontented. With the calm system, we have a healthy sensitivity and tolerance to pain. But the stress system, our pain sensitivity is increased and our tolerance to pain is decreased. With the calm system, we have normal short-term memory, but with the stress system, our short-term memory is decreased. The calm system, we have normal concentration, but the stress system makes concentrating difficult. Now, the calm system, we don't have symptoms of stress, but the stress system, yes, we do have symptoms of stress. With the calm system, our thoughts are focused on pleasure, peace, satisfaction, and joy. Whereas the stress system, our thoughts are focused on danger, angst, fear, uneasiness, urgency, and discontent. Now, these are just a few of the many ways the calm and stress systems balance themselves. Again, when the body is healthy, the calm and stress systems balance each other, keeping the body healthy. Going back to our illustrations, when we experience stress, the stress system increases while the calm system decreases. As long as we're experiencing stress, the stress system grows while the calm system shrinks. One of the reasons the calm system shrinks in response to stress is that stress increases glutamate while reducing GABA. The longer the body is under stress, the imbalance grows with glutamate increasing and GABA decreasing. As glutamate increases, the body becomes more excited. 
As GABA decreases, the calm system loses its ability to calm us down when we want to feel calm. Thankfully, short-term stress doesn't create much of an imbalance. When that stress ends and the body has time to recover, the calm system slowly recovers and the stress system slowly decreases. Given sufficient time, the calm and stress systems eventually return to a healthy balance and the body functions normally again. However, this all changes when the body becomes chronically stressed, such as from constant worry. For instance, when we're chronically stressed, the stress system elevates and remains elevated while the calm system continues to decrease. An elevated stress system will keep all of its changes elevated as well. For instance, glutamate keeps the body overly excited. Neuronal activity remains overly excited. Metabolism remains elevated. Muscles can tighten and remain tight, stiff and sore. The vagus nerve loses its tone, causing all sorts of vagus nerve-related problems. Keep in mind that the vagus nerve influences digestion, heart activity, and nervous system function, and so on. The fear center of the brain remains overly active, while the rationalization areas of the brain remain suppressed. Respiration can remain elevated, causing issues with shortness of breath and heart-related symptoms. We can have chronic stomach and digestive issues. Our senses can become super sensitive. Homeostasis becomes dysregulated and erratic. Hormones can be all over the map since hormones affect each other. The body can remain stimulated because the body has less ability to calm itself. Consequently, we can have difficulty resting and sleeping. We lose our ability to think clearly and rationally. We're less able to contain fear. We become overly sensitive and reactive to danger, such as we can perceive danger where we normally wouldn't. A reduction in pleasure because our ability to access the pleasure centers of the brain are suppressed. Consequently, we'll also have less access to healthy, positive emotions while having exaggerated negative emotions, including fear. The stress response becomes like a hair trigger. We're more likely to have unwanted and intrusive thoughts, which can also seem more threatening and relevant with reduced ability to dismiss them. Our sensitivity to pain is increased while our tolerance to pain is decreased. We can have all kinds of cognitive and memory impairments. And our thoughts can seem solely focused on danger, fear, uneasiness, and discontent. Again, just to name a few. Then, when you want to calm yourself, the body is less able to because the calm system has decreased so much. And when you want to feel good about something, your mind is less able to because the fear center is more active, and so on. Because of the changes due to chronic stress, it can seem like your mind is stuck in survival mode, constantly scaring you with anxious thoughts and patterns. Once this imbalance between the two systems has become chronic, it can take a lot of work and time to correct this imbalance. Thankfully, we can correct the imbalance between the calm system and the stress system, but it requires constant work and lots of time. We have to manually retrain the body to be calmer so that the stress system quiets down, allowing the calm system to recover. We do that through stress reduction and rest. As the body becomes rested, the calm system slowly restores and the stress system slowly decreases. As the calm system recovers, we regain the ability to calm ourselves when we want to. But it can be a long process of recovery because research has shown that it takes four times as long to recover from the adverse effects of stress as it does to incur them. That's because the body needs time to recover from stress and much longer than most people expect. But if we continually work our recovery strategies, the body will recover in time, and that's the good news. However, there's another challenge to consider. Fear, including anxiety-related fears such as worry, can quickly spike up the stress system. Even short-term worry can create a sizable imbalance between the calm and stress systems because of how quickly fear spikes the stress system. For instance, a few weeks of intense worry can create a significant imbalance that the body then has to recover from. This quick imbalance is a common catalyst into a struggle with anxiety disorder and its symptoms. For example, worrying about the sudden appearance of anxiety symptoms will keep the stress system elevated, causing a further reduction in the calm system. And as we mentioned earlier, anxious behavior creates stress. Stress creates symptoms. Worrying about symptoms creates more stress. More stress sustains and creates more symptoms and so on. The more we worry, the greater the imbalance and the longer it will take to restore. We can only reverse this by reducing stress and giving the body ample time to recover 
to where the calm system can regain a healthy balance with the stress system. When we reduce the body's stress and for long enough, the calm system regains its healthy balance with the stress system and symptoms subside. As mentioned, it can take a very long time for the calm system to regain its healthy balance once the body has become hyperstimulated. The higher degree of hyperstimulation, the longer it can take to regain the healthy balance. In the meantime, the stress system and all of its changes will continue, so we'll continue to feel overly excited with the reduced ability to feel calm, rest and sleep can be disrupted, fear messages can seem rampant with an inability to contain them, we can have a myriad of physical symptoms, and so on. These will only disappear when the calm and stress systems rebalance. That's why passive acceptance is so important. If we keep triggering ourselves off with fear about our symptoms, that will keep the stress system active and the calm system suppressed. This is also why expecting a quick recovery is unrealistic. The body can't recover faster than it is able. It needs plenty of time to restore a healthy balance between the calm and stress systems. There is no quick way that that can happen. If you've been stressed for several months or more, don't expect a few months of recovery is sufficient because it isn't. Your body will need a lot of time to recover and that's providing we keep stress to a minimum. Since stress has a profound effect on the nervous system, which is comprised of neurons, nerve cells that have an electrochemical makeup, the nervous system can take far longer than other parts of the body to recover from the effects of stress. This is again why passive acceptance and patience are required. Nevertheless, when we reduce stress, increase rest, contain anxious behavior so that we stop stressing the body, and give the body time to recover, it will. It's just a matter of time. As a healthy balance between the calm and stress systems restore, symptoms of stress subside. So the takeaway from all this is, if we want to feel better, be less reactive, worry less, and feel more peace, joy, and satisfaction with life, we have to reduce stress and give the body sufficient time to recover. When the body has recovered, both the calm and stress systems function normally, causing a return to normal, non-hyperstimulated health. And if we keep that healthy balance, we can maintain a healthy psychological, emotional, and physical life throughout our lifetime. We can do that by managing our stress well. And we can manage our stress well when we address the underlying factors that influence anxious behavior that cause issues with stress. Working with an experienced anxiety disorder therapist is the most effective way to attain level 2 recovery success. Attaining level 2 recovery success eliminates issues with anxiety and the stress it produces. I encourage you to keep all of this in mind when you are working on your recovery so that your expectations are in line with reality. Having a realistic view of recovery can make the entire recovery process so much easier and quicker. Number one, stressful behavior, such as anxious behavior, activates the stress system, and calm behavior, such as containing and soothing ourselves, activates the calm system. Attaining level two recovery means you'll spend more time activating the calm system and less time activating the stress system, which will keep symptoms at bay. This is why attaining level two recovery is vital to lasting recovery from anxiety disorder, hyperstimulation, and their symptoms. Number two, as long as the body is hyperstimulated, even to the slightest degree, it can present symptoms of any type, number, intensity, duration, frequency, and at any time. Hyperstimulation symptoms only completely disappear when the body has had sufficient time to recover and stabilize. Any other expectation is unrealistic.